Right now, we're going to Vinny Centuri, national champ winning defensive back at the University of Alabama. Hey, Vinny, I hope you've had a great week. Welcome back into the game here in T-Town. Hey, good week, a good short week, and I'm ready to get uh, college football started uh, once again for the weekend. Hey, Vinny, as you're sitting there in New York City, uh, how much has your mind been going back to T-Town, um, imagining what Nick Saban's been like in practice coming off of a 54-14 to 14 win? You know, um, sitting here in this New York City apartment, whenever you played that Scott Cochran clip, I had to calm down before I ran out my uh, apartment back <laughs> on the street. I got, I, got, I got a little too excited listening to that. I, uh, it brought me back to 2013 for sure. Well, you know, he sets the but, tone, uh, right? I mean, he sets the tone as, as Scott Cochran's amazing uh, part of our staff here in Tuscaloosa. You know, I think a lot of people – talk about Coach David and what he brings to the University of Alabama, but I think a big part of recruiting, a big part of player-to-coach uh, relationship building and player development is put aside, and I think Coach, Coach Cochran is probably the X factor from the University of Alabama when it comes to all of those things, and I think, I, I don't think people realize how big of a factor he is in recruiting, in player development, and that's why Alabama is so great because they have someone like Coach Cocker on the sidelines and in the building all, all the time. So, Benny, what do you think is the mindset of Coach Nick Saban? I know we talked a lot about it Monday when we recapped the game, but we're more in a preview. Uh, how hard do you think he's been on the players this week in Tuscaloosa? <laughs> so, Coach knows how to push players during certain games. Week one, um, a lot of young guys, a lot of inexperience, a lot of nerves going into that game. He was going to be calm, level-headed, make sure everybody felt comfortable. This week, he's pressing. He's making sure that everybody knows that we need to get better. He's pressing, knowing that this team coming in is going to pass the ball, is going to try our secondary. He knows that these guys are going to have a little bit of a hangover coming off a week one win against Louisville, and he's going to have to make sure that they're riled up, and he's going to go into that game thinking guys are going to play sloppy, there's going to be mental errors, and they're not going to be as in tune as they were week one. And I can, I can I imagine a very animated Coach Saban on Saturday. So, Coach Nick Saban, as, as we talk about uh, each and every week, we break it down from a lot of different perspectives. Are you expecting that Arkansas State's going to bring any success into bryant Diddy Stadium? I mean, this team uh, did throw for almost 500 yards, starting quarterback Justin Hansen, 423, six touchdowns. Do you expect that uh, there will be a test and, and maybe some obstacles for Alabama's defensive backs? You know, it's kind of like the flip of a coin. You know, if it lands on heads, it, there's a possibility of them having success early. If they're able to protect, if they're able to play action fake, get this Alabama defense out of an eight-man front and have the ability to stretch, uh, push the ball down the field through the air, then I see this offense having some type of opportunity early on to have success. But I, I really see the coin landing on tails and Alabama's defensive line applying a lot of pressure. Tosh dialing, dialing it up early, trying to get this quarterback uncomfortable on early downs and creating long down situation on third down, which will allow Alabama's offense to get on the field. And, you know, my theory with the uh, flying Hawaiian under center, I think they're going to put up probably 40 to 50 points in this game. Well, and, and I think that's the, the really the odd part about it is even though we respect Arkansas State, they're in one of those others receiving votes in the top 25 AP and the coaches' votes. They're getting some votes and some consideration as one of those top mid-majors. But then you look at Las Vegas, and they've got this thing at like 37-point difference according to the experts in the desert. Well, you, well, you look at it, and you look at the difference between uh, a team like Arkansas State and a team like Alabama. The, the wide receivers, the DBs, there are little bits and pieces that separate those players, but it really comes down to the front seven. The ability for a 300-pound player at Alabama to run a 4-6 or a 4-7 is not likely to happen against Arkansas State, and these guys have not seen in the, on the offensive line for Arkansas State and haven't seen a guy like Raekwon Davis or Christian Miller or those guys up front that are able to do that, and I think that's where the mismatch is going to happen early on in this game, they're going to be shocked by how big and fast these guys are on the front seven for Alabama's defense. What would you like to see Alabama as far as maybe something that you didn't see last week on the defensive side of the football? Where would you like to see them maybe do a cleanup before we get to the challenge in Oxford, Mississippi? So 
I saw late in the game, and Coach Saban referenced this in one of his press conferences, of how the game ended. And it's easy whenever you're up, and it's easy whenever you're going up against lesser competition to slack off and allow mental errors to happen, allow uh, opportunities to open up in the defense. And from what I've, I've seen on, uh, on the Internet and looking at this Arkansas State offense, they have the ability to throw the football, and this quarterback does have faith in his arm. So if they do have mental errors early and they are able to execute on those mental errors from the Alabama secondary, it could, it could turn into a long day for Alabama. I mean, you saw Penn State struggle against App State, and you saw Michigan State struggle early on against uh, Utah State. And if you come in with the mindset that they're just going to let roll over and play dead, then it's going to create opportunities for Arkansas State. So what I want to see is them start fast and finish the game fast. And I want to make sure that we don't have mental errors, and I want to make sure that even the, the younger guys that are starting, that once they get out and on the sidelines, that they're still tuned into the game and making sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to do while they're on the field. We're talking to Vinny Sensuri right now on a Friday afternoon before Alabama takes on Arkansas State, 2.30 tomorrow. Uh, when we talk about going inside Bryant Diddy Stadium, going to be a big game. A big game, ESPN2, Bryant Diddy Stadium. We'll have the broadcast here with Eli Gold, John Parker Wilson, Rashad Johnson here on Tide 1029. Uh, Vinny, when I, when I go back to last week's game and defensively, who else, and I know we talked about this Monday, but really some guys that may have grabbed your attention on that side of the football that maybe you could think that uh, will be stepping into another game with another opportunity, somebody that really grabbed your attention that played above and beyond. The outside linebacker position coming into that game was a, a big concern because of injuries. And I thought Christian Miller really stepped up as a person that could be a physical and vocal leader. And when you say physical, you mean having attributes to have success on the football field, but then also vocal as in during the game, whenever it's the fourth quarter and we might possibly up, but be by up by a certain number of points and he's on the sidelines. He needs to be that person that's on the sidelines, a veteran guy that's making sure that everybody's tuned in still and making sure those young guys that are getting reps take advantage of those opportunities because live game reps, you can't, you can't mimic that anywhere else. I mean, there's, there's only a certain amount of opportunities that you get as a young person to play and him being in the front seven, him being an older guy and having the tools to be successful on the field could create opportunities for him to not only help him right now at Alabama, but help draft stock and help show NFL executives that he is a guy that could be a leader at the next level. Vinny, when you look at Tua Tonga-Vailoa, we had a quarterback in earlier that uh, is the color analyst at Mississippi State that spent some time with some film study around Tua Tonga-Vailoa, and he described him as free spirit. He said he's a very free spirit player. He's a guy that, uh, you know, he plays with a lot of things on his chest, and uh, certainly you don't want to take that away and make him play constrained. But is there a healthy balance between understanding, hey, man, you don't want to take that big hit. You, you don't want to pick up two yards and, you know, take a big linebacker, a big safety coming up, laying the lumber. How do you find that healthy balance with a guy that is free spirit, that, that loves to play with a lot of different emotions and, and doesn't want to give up on the play, but also you don't want to take those big-time hits in this league? You know, it, it comes with experience. It comes with an understanding of what, how, what kind of player you are and when to take certain risks. I mean, there's in every single aspect of life, there's risk and reward. And being able to understand how to measure the risk to the reward is what makes a great player a great player. You look at RG3, and he might have taken too many risks and put his body at risk early on in his career, and that's why he tore his ACL and had a lot of things happen to him. But then you look at a guy like Baker Mayfield, who's similar to a Tua Tonga Viola, where you take risks, you, get, you move with your feet, but you keep your eyes downfield. And whenever someone's coming to hit you, instead of trying to maybe make them miss or trying to extend the play, you slide and you take the yards that you get. And it's, he's a young guy. He's only he's a true sophomore, and it, it all comes with development and learning. And I'm sure Coach David during the week brought him in and was like, you know, I love you. I think that you have a lot of uh, upside and you have a lot of potential, but your potential will be limited if you're on the sidelines because you're hurt. He was like, we need you to be healthy. We need you to be on the field for us producing at a high level, and you're only going to be able to do that if you take care of your body. Vinny, let me ask you, when you look at this game, is there a goal when you talk about trying to get the offense, uh, and I say more sync, I, I'm making an assumption, and I know I, I did this Monday, 
But I think this offense is going to be even better. Tua Tonga-Vailoa receiving the majority, not all, but the majority of the first-team reps, uh, getting this offense in sync uh, before they take on Ole Miss on the road. Something just tells me this offense may even be better than what we saw last week. You know, um, I really – there's there's – there's a there's a high 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 level of expectation for this offense, and I think it's going to supersede what everybody thinks. Um, nobody had Tua Tungabola as a Heisman candidate. Nobody had Damian Harris, Najee Harris, or Josh Jacobs as running backs that could be difference makers. Nobody really thought about uh, Judy or uh, Smith at the wide wide receiver position. I, I, we have a lot of weapons, and I, I've never seen an Alabama offense complete like this one is and for other teams and you heard Kerb Herbstreit say this it is going to be scary on Saturdays whenever they find that happy medium of run pass and Tua feels comfortable in the pocket and he's distributing the ball and then you get these running backs running the ball in this offense line opening holes I mean there's a possibility for this to be one of those special offenses that we remember for the next 20 years Vinny, when this team is so good and we are expecting this team is going to blow out a lot of teams and and how hard is it as a player to not become distracted with being so good and you you, you let that word complacency creep back in? Well, if you're a competitor and Coach Saban and, I mean, even Kobe Bryant when he came into Alabama said this, when you're a competitor – the results aren't what you're focused on. And when you want to be the best, it is going to work every day and putting in the work so that whenever you get the results, you're happy with what the results are. And I think a Tua Tonga Viola, I think a Damian Harris, I think a Joan Williams, Christian Miller, Deontay Thompson, Mac Wilson, all of those guys want to be as good as they can be. They've seen what a Ha Ha Clinton Dix have done. They see what a CJ Mosley and a Mark Cooper and AJ McCarron um, all those guys bond in, try to get better every day. And when you do that and you really put towards the work to get better and like abide by the process, opportunities are endless. And you can create as much wealth and opportunity for yourself that, as you can. And that, at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's making yourself as valuable as you can. And I think uh, complacency can fit in with young guys, but if they have the right mindset and they have a coach like Nick Save and pushing them. I, I really don't see it happening anytime soon, especially with the inexperience. Hey, Vinny, anything outside of Alabama, Arkansas State, grab your opinion from, from a perspective. Obviously, Georgia, South Carolina, Clemson, Texas, St. Am, some of the bigger games uh, in the SEC that we'll be keeping our eye on. Which one of those games maybe grabs your attention even more uh, as, as we move past Alabama for a minute? You know, the Clemson Texas A and M game really grabs my attention. You got a quarterback battle, you got two guys looking over their shoulder trying to prove something. I could see them pressing early on in the game. And you got a guy like Jimbo Fisher who has played Clemson for the last four to five years, um, knows how to attack them, knows weaknesses in their defense and how to uh, approach an offense like this. I-, I think that's a game that might be a lot closer than people think. And playing on the road in that atmosphere that Aggie Land's going to bring is going to be something special. And it's going to be hot, and it's going to be muggy, and it's going to create a lot of opportunities for the uh, for Texas A&M to possibly get ahead or stay within the game to where late in the game they can make a run at uh, maybe make another nice little upset. Hey, another big game that uh, the rest of college football is focused on outside of the SEC, and I know you have uh, some personal ties with your brother, uh, Pittsburgh. He started for three years there at Pittsburgh. Going to be hosting Penn State, which is a big game tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock local time uh, there in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, anything grab you there? You know, Penn State came out very sluggish, struggled against App State, and I think it was a wake-up call for a team that actually, that does have a lot of upside and has a lot of possibilities. I think they come in, they handle their business, and I actually think that's a double-digit win for Penn State. Even though they struggled against App State, I see a lot of uh, I see a lot of corrections made by James Franklin, and I see them coming out with a lot more energy and a lot more to prove than what they did against Appalachian State. And then on the West Coast, we've got USC and Stanford. Uh, that's going to be a 7:30 game tomorrow. USC 17th in the country. Stanford right now, right on the top 10 there at the top 10 spot, according to the experts in the desert. Stanford is the favorite in this game uh, out in Stanford, California. 
You know, I, I really don't think Stanford has the firepower to do that. You you create eight man boxes and you you say, make this quarterback beat me with his arm. And if history repeats itself and they, it's not Andrew Luck under center, I really think that USC is going to have an opportunity to uh, win this football game. If you shut down the running back for Stanford and make that quarterback beat you with his arm, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for USC on the offensive side of the ball because I see a lot of three and outs and running the football for Stanford is their bread and butter. <laughs> hey, Benny, real quick. Still get an opportunity. Hey, real quick, are you going to be doing a uh, Periscope tomorrow, man? I know that I uh, got a lot of feedback, a lot of people watching. Uh, something you may do every Saturday, possibly? Yeah, I think I want to do it every Saturday. I think it's something fun to do, and I think it kind of opens up the opportunity to talk about uh, all of college football and maybe even a little bit of NFL football. So hey. it's going to be fun. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, and you can connect with Vinny if you want to follow that on the Twitter account. Join those 65,000 Alabama fans who follow Vinny Sinceri, V-S-U-N-S-E-R. Let me try that again. I, I just really struck out there. I feel like an Auburn guy. Uh, <laughs> Vinny Sinceri on the Twitter account, V-S-U-N-S-E-R-I, number three. Vinny Sinceri there on the Twitter account. Uh, he'll be doing Periscope tomorrow. Hey, Vinny, as always, man, I appreciate you for being a part of the show. We'll talk to you Monday, man. Hey, thanks for having me on, and uh, good luck this weekend to the Crimson Tide.